Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's time for a quick update. I'm going to try to keep this brief, but also keep it focused on the planes. There's a lot to update on, on all the projects that are going on so far, and we're really close to starting the last project for the rest of the winter. Let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to bring up is the Hell Diver. Let me go grab it from its storage area and I'll show you what's going on with that model. The Hell Diver, as you can see, is all in one piece uh, again. Uh, showing you the bottom, you can see that I've got the bottom repaired. The landing gear works, it's ready to go again, and yeah, it's just fully repaired. I went ahead and programmed in the amount of down elevator uh, for the horizontal stabilizer, and that I did that first because I didn't want to mess up any of the, the programming. So now I'm fully neutral in terms of my trims. Uh, I used an angle finder to set a, an exact angle, and then I loosened the screw on my I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I uh, just loosened it and uh, uh, set everything neutral. So the amount of trim offset I had to program in, in the radio, which was a lot. And then I neutraled out the actual trim on the main screen. So everything is fully neutral, but the angle that I had it set at is exactly the same as when I got it flying straight and true. Again, this was an error on my part in building the model in that I did not check the incidence of the tail against the plans before I glued it in place. This is entirely on me as the builder. I should have checked that. And it's important for you guys to realize that it's not a CG problem. It's not a safety problem. I built the, the airplane wrong. So please just accept that I'm showing you my flaws. It happens. And this is how we deal with it. I could cut the tail off and re-glue it, but I'm not going to because in my opinion, this model isn't exactly worth it, uh, worth the effort. It's meant to be sport scale and just sort of do its thing and give me a silhouette to, to fly this model and get used to it and get used to the platform. And it will do that job just fine. So those repairs are all done. Uh, used a heat gun to shrink everything down again, having gone through a heat and cold cycle because it was really cold when it flew. Needed a little bit of love and attention, so the wings are all set and good to go. So let's move on. The air truck has not had a whole lot of progress on it. I will be frankly honest with you. I have been busy with a lot of other things, including Dubro 101 videos. And the air, the air truck is just slow to progress. However, I have made some progress recently. So let me get it out and show it to you. As you can see, I have uh, more or less finalized the cowl after removing the whole front end. And uh, I, that's all great and good and everything, but really what I've done for the fuselage anyway, is I've, I've done some wood trimming to make the front end symmetrical and make look more scale, at least per the, the pictures and videos that I've seen online. I'm a member of a Facebook group that is a bunch of fanatics about these airplanes and it's been really great reference material. Uh, so with that, I've also installed a Dubro Easy Brake system. Easy brake systems are not naturally compatible with their pneumatic wheels. I will say that I had to drill precisely drill on my drill press holes for the, the, uh, splines that fit in. And I I've had to modify the landing gear system a little bit to shoehorn this in there, but I think it might be a fun feature to have to stop this airplane since it, I am intending to do this as an agricultural, uh, uh livery so that it uh, really, it pays memory to the actual scale airplane and not some fantasy. I think that would be uh, more fitting for what this airplane was originally intended for given the, the top piece. So that's another tidbit along the way. So I, I also have the hatch open down here. I'm gonna put in a servo that will be tied to the elevator. Uh, so the elevator, when you push forward, uh, you can, you can uh, do that. With the wings, I have gone and uh, taken care of the S-Bus to PWM installation. I've also added the uh, servo extensions that were needed on the inside. There were some 
uh, tubes on the inside of the wing that I was able to utilize to run those servo extensions for. Uh, all the servos were great. I did some basic programming uh, just to look at how I needed to set up things and adjust things mechanically. Uh, so when I plug the wings in, everything should be more or less uh, symmetrical. If I need to, I can put each individual aileron, each individual flap, and individual rudders and elevators, <laughs> I can put it all on separate channels because of the PWM SBUS stuff. I can have eight channels for those control surfaces and then have it a separate individual rudder channel as well as an individual elevator channel for the brake and a throttle channel. So eight, nine, 10, 11 channels because I have 16 channels in my radio system natively. That's the power of SBUS. So that's why I'm going to this extreme. I have lots of adjustability. I have lots of control surfaces. It's a nice modern thing that we can do for our airplanes. So think about that next time you're considering a complex project like this. It's the same on both sides. So there's, there's not a whole lot, again, visually to update you on other than I've replaced all of the screws in the bottom uh, of with all the panels. I replaced those with RTL fastener screws. Just a lot easier to work with these. The other ones had like 1.5 millimeter hex head button screw. I, they were so tiny and they're so easy to strip that I, I just didn't want to fiddle with them if I had to service this thing in the, in the field. Not to mention RTL fasteners are, uh, they, do, they do contain enough iron and steel that you can pick them up with a magnet if you do drop them at the field. So really nice, handy, serviceable, um, in, inspected all of the servos inside here. I got all of my servo extensions. <laughs> Uh, there are tubes that run through. There's a tube that runs through here to the two servos for the elevator and rudder. And then there is the flap and aileron servo, which has another tube that runs through this portion of the wing. I wanted this to be inside the wing, but with the tubes that are already inside the wing, that's not really practical. So I am likely going to have to... Uh, attach all four servo wires after I install the wing. It's going to be awkward and horrible to assemble, but I'm still not entirely convinced. I may be able to puncture some holes through the tubes if I'm very, very careful. Um, we'll see. I don't know what the structure is. I don't have plans to this airplane, so I don't know what the structure is inside, so I don't want to compromise any structural integrity by doing that modification. So that's my hesitancy there. So uh, that's it on the air truck. Let's move on to the, uh, the O-1B Falcon. All right. So first and foremost, the Falcon is still huge. Um, it, it's absolutely an enormous <laughs> airplane. Um, so post flight impressions are, she's actually a pussycat of a flyer. I love it. Uh, reviewing the footage uh, showed that I was a little bit more nervous at the time than what the footage reveals, especially on takeoff where there was that slight hesitancy to climb and then it all of a sudden ballooned. So that wasn't me. All right, here we go. That was a moment of cold air and the airplane was starting to sink a little bit and I was feeding in elevator and then it pushed through that cold air into warm air and all of a sudden lifted really high. Uh, so yeah, my nerves were a little bit shot on that, but I was happy to make the circuit. There is just enough power right now. I do still believe that I need to lean out the engine a little bit. There was some uh, gasoline on the side of the cowl on the outside, just outside of where the carburetor is clearly getting plenty of fuel, but I, I do need to lean it out and make that, make that mixture just right. The only repairs that need to be done are superficial. So the one repair, I lost a screw for one of the exhaust headers on the cowl, which I've re I replaced easily, added a little bit of Loctite on that screw so it's not coming out. The only other repair was actually not during flight at all, it was when I was disassembling the airplane. And it's kind of hard to show in here, but there's a, 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 a 
control rod, essentially, that links the top aileron to the bottom aileron. The bottom aileron has the servo and the top aileron does not, but it has a linkage. And this piece of plastic, when I was trying to remove the, the linkage rod, uh, it, it just broke. It snapped. Due to, to old age, likely, the, uh, the, the plastic does deteriorate, deteriorate a little over time. So I need to replace that. Uh, that looks like it's a custom piece cut from something else. So I need to look into that. Likely uh, the Dubro left and right hinges uh, will do just fine. And I can, can cut and size that to fit these particular openings. They're pretty small uh, to, to not be quite as uh, obtrusively off scale. Okay, so the other thing about this is that all of the screws, all of the hardware in the wings that assemble the wings, they're all machine screws. Okay, so you're having machine screws into wood. There are no metal retainers that I can tell of inside here. While it does currently work, long term, this is not a good solution in my opinion. So you have very shallow pitch, uh, so lots and lots of threads but they're also very uh, uh, thin threads that don't have much bite into the wood. Uh, wood screws, if you look at actual wood screws, they are coarse and wide threads. So they bite into the wood, but they are less frequent. Uh, and it's, it's, in my opinion, these just don't seem like they're gonna hold up over time. So I am gonna go through and carefully find the right size and replace all of these screws like that one and that one and that one and that one. All of these are machine screws. So I'm gonna replace these with RTL fastener screws because it's gonna make my life easier. Again, they're magnetic, so if I lose one at the field, I can find it. I was fortunate enough at that field to have a huge table to assemble it on, and if I dropped a screw, I could find it. I won't always have that luxury. And these screws, some of them are, are less magnetic than others and I would rather have a more secure connection, especially since these flying uh, wire, not flying, landing wires and flying wires, <laughs> uh, they, they actually work. They actually hold tension. So it's important that these be secure as well. So that is work to do as well. The only other, th only other things that are going on with the Falcon are cosmetic upgrades. So cosmetic upgrades that I want to do include a new radiator grill in the front, uh, a new pilot, as I've mentioned before, the front windscreen needs to be replaced and updated with fresh plastics. The, uh, the, the gun on the rear seat position needs to be just completely rebuilt. Uh, all of the mounting hardware as well needs to be done. going to fire up the printer for that. More on that to come, but everything else uh, for the most part is fine. As I find things to improve on that airplane, that's what that's for. It's little projects here and there to update that airplane as a resto mod. I've restored it at this point. It's time for me to modify it to put my own personal detailed touches on it and bring up the detail on that model just a little bit higher with some modern technologies like 3D printing. Now I have some minor distractions here and there going on. I have a little project here on the bench that is coming along fine. It's again, minor distraction. I've got a couple of other small repairs to do on some other models. We're coming to the end of the year and it is getting colder and colder. The corn is finally cut <laughs> at my flying field, so I can actually fly my models there. Uh, but again, it's cold, it's windy, it's wet, it's bumpy. Uh, so it's a different kind of challenge for flying. So I'm mainly focusing on building right now. If I can have an option to go and have a nice day of flying at the field, then I will take that. And if I don't have that option, then I will be building. And the next project that's coming will be a big one. I've got a really great project lined up. I hope you guys are stoked for it. It's going to be awesome. It's a subject that I've wanted to do a big build for years. I've got a fantastic designer who's provided plans. I've got fantastic companies that are supporting it. And it's going to be a really fantastic build for Seth, I might 
add as at the very end here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the updates on all of these projects that you've been following along with and more to come very shortly. Until next time, keep working on your flying works of art.